so many TikToks. Like, that was the longest TikTok I've ever watched. Why? It actually really bothered me. And it was a bit different and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I'm sorry, I literally had my hand, I was like this. It was just really cringe. <laughs> oh my God, nothing made me more angry in this film than... Hi friends, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. I've been gone a while, but I'm trying to get back. But quick update since I last saw you, if you're wondering. I got engaged. I had a stall with my small business at Musical Con. I got really, really sick for a couple of months and I bought a new house with Lucy in a new town and that's about it. So excuse the background, we have not done the bedroom yet so it is a bit of a mess, but whatever. Let's start. So we're actually going to New York in March for Lucy's 30th birthday and I really want to just get back to this and connect with people and get excited about our trip and stuff. Like let's be honest though. You didn't really expect there to be a movie of Mean Girls the Musical and for me to not talk about it, right? I know I've fallen off, but hello, this is still a society. If there's one thing I'm gonna do, is talk about Mean Girls the Musical. Mean Girls the Movie Musical. How do I even begin to explain Mean Girls the Movie Musical? Mean Girls the Movie Musical is flawful. It has a few people who can't sing and Renee Rapp. I heard it was originally going straight to streaming services. I heard they changed a bunch of the musical arrangements and filmed them as TikToks. This remake of my favorite show gave me varsity blues. One time I saw the original show on Broadway and the mirror told me I was pretty. One time I saw Mean Girls the movie musical. It was not awesome. Okay, let's get into it. For real though, like where to start, this video feels like it's gonna be a long one. So let's, let's catch up. So I've loved the show from the very first time I heard the original soundtrack. Then I saw the show three times on Broadway. I've loved Renee Rapp as well since she performed at Broadway Con in the Star to Be event in 2019, way before she was even with Mean Girls. And then in March 2020, I was due to go to New York and I was gonna go and see Renee in Mean Girls. And then COVID happened and the lockdown happened and the Broadway shutdown happened and it was all awful. But then they announced that they were gonna be making a movie musical of Mean Girls. I can't lie, I don't generally love a remake of a classic, but I thought, right, movie into musical into movie, just like they did with Hairspray, and the Hairspray movie is wonderful, Mean Girls the movie musical is going to be wonderful too, right? <laughs> Wrong. So they announced that Tina Fey was gonna be doing the screenplay for the new Mean Girls, and Renee Rapp was gonna be Regina. Dude, I was so excited. Then it was announced that Aulili was gonna be playing Janice. The girl from the Miley Cyrus episode of Black Mirror was gonna be playing Katie. I was on board. And so some of the early criticism for the film came when the first trailer was released. And it said like, this isn't your mom's Mean Girls. People were like, firstly, do they know how old we are? And I'm like, yeah you are old enough that you could possibly have a teenage child. Get over it, hon. <laughs> We're all old. But the trailer was like, it was punchy and it was very quick. There was a lot of Renee just kind of being kind of mean and sexy and evil and some girl looking kind of shy and vaguely lost. And the whole trailer was underscored by Getting Back by Olivia Rodrigo, which is a great song, but not a song in the movie. And like, there wasn't even a hint of singing. Like, what was this? Not your mom's Mean Girls, but certainly not a musical theatre fan's Mean Girls by the looks of it either. I just don't understand why movie musicals these days are so hesitant to advertise that they're movie musicals. I heard that it's because producers don't want people to be put off seeing it if they think it's a musical, so they like, hide it. And like, if you think people don't like musicals, why are you making them? I don't know, I think it's a bigger conversation and maybe I'll do a video on it. If you would be interested in that, let me know. Anyway, little bits of coming out about the movie and it's like very overwhelmingly Renee Rapp, Regina George focused. And like, okay, Renee Rapp is the hot girl of the moment. Everybody loves her, I love her, she's amazing. It makes sense. But the original movie and the musical have always been Katie's story and it felt kind of strange to shift that. Then the soundtrack was released. I actually managed to avoid it, but a clip came up on my TikTok of Stupid With Love. And to be honest, I thought it was a joke because it sounded like an AI creation. Regardless, I tried to still go into the movie as like open-minded and well, let's discuss. I have lots of thoughts. Okay, so the open of the film, I actually quite liked. A cautionary tale being 
a TikTok. Like, there certainly is a time and a place for technology in movies set in 2024, where tech is such a huge part of our lives. But the tech in this film, I do think, went way overboard at times, but I will get into that. Yeah, a cautionary tale. I love that Moana is now a hot, artsy lesbian. I love Jaquel from A Strange Loop. I think they're a really good pair together. In the original show, it's like, our story begins across the globe in Africa. And in this film, it didn't have that. And I felt like you really needed it because suddenly we're watching two people film a TikTok and then suddenly we see this girl who we don't know who she is and we don't know where she is really. It looks like she's in a field and she's kind of singing this insipid song that is kind of dirty and in this very soft voice that you're like, what are you saying? So in the musical, it goes straight from A Cautionary Tale into It Roars. And I actually do understand amending or taking out It Roars. It has some pretty cringe language, but the inclusion of this new song felt strange. To be honest, it didn't really feel like it was adding anything to the story or really set the story up in any way. Like It Roars sets the story. It's like, hi, I live in Africa. I'm about to go to America because of this and this and this. But what if so you're just hearing this girl talking about her dreams and her goals and whatever, her views on life, I guess. Um, but it's not kind of clear enough. And in It Rolls, you see who the character of Katie is. You see that she's sweet and naive, but she's also really smart and she's excited to go to the US and find out about all these things. But what ifs, the new song just really didn't give that. Without that, we don't know who this girl is and we don't know why we should care for her. We don't know why we should care about her wants or her dreams or anything really. When she got to the school, I did really enjoy it when they were like showing the different teachers. There was a guy called Mr. Rap. They were like, I'm Mr. Rap and I don't take any and you'd expect them to say crap. But one of the students said, care of myself? And I actually thought that was very funny. Let's be honest though, you know it's bad when you start writing down the things that you think are gonna be funny so that you could say something positive. There was some very odd direction in this film. Like the first time they introduced Katie to the class, she's just stood up there. She stood up there at the front of the class, but then she stood there like the whole time during their little conversation and that's just, Awkward. And then the, she like goes to sit down, but there's not a table. So she sits on the floor. I'm sorry, in what world would she need to sit on the floor? That's just so weird. One thing I do have to say, when they were showing the French class, firstly, I adore Ashley Park. She was incredible in the show. Every time I saw her on Broadway, she completely stole the show. So I loved her being in it and I loved her having a cameo. But oh my God, I actually hate that French bit with the French tea, where it's like, pick a French name. And it's like, Marie, Fantine. Beyonce. I don't know, I just never found it funny in the show and I think there are some really good lines in the original stage production and that seemed like a strange one to transfer over to the movie um, when a lot of other stuff got cut. I always hated it. I just never got it. So the movie was the directorial debut of Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr. And personally, I don't ever really think a directing team works that well. I feel like you can always tell because it feels like it has too many visions going on at a time and it can end up feeling quite disjointed I think. So it felt like a really strange choice to have two people direct this movie who've also never directed a feature film movie before, who've never directed a musical movie before. Like get someone like Lin-Manuel Miranda who did his directorial debut with Tick Tick Boom which is an excellent movie musical or somebody like John M. Chu or Adam Shankman, people who have links to theatre already and who understand the medium of musical theatre because I think that is the biggest thing about this movie. I feel like it is it was directed by people who do not understand musical theatre at its core. So I actually read an article about the directors and their view of the movie and they said their goal was to make it look as though this was like a home video by Janice and Damien who were telling the story of something that happened at their high school and the film is basically what it would be like if a couple of teenagers decided to tell this story. Interestingly, I do think they kind of succeeded in that. I literally wrote, because I took a little notepad with me and I literally wrote down, this feels like it was made by a bunch of teenagers or kids or something who decided to get together and tell the story of Mean Girls. It didn't come across 
intentionally though. I just thought, hmm, this film looks like it was made by a bunch of kids. Like, not a great movie telling device. I think if they'd have taken that further and made it clearer, it would have worked loads better, but it just wasn't on the nose enough. And I also think there should have been more narration. Like, when you think of the original Mean Girls movie as well, there is so much narration. Either from Katie giving her inner thoughts, or from like the students around school talking to the camera as though they're like gossiping about Regina George. And there's so much in those segments that move the story along and give context. And I really felt like that was missing from this movie. You know, the tagline is not your mom's Mean Girls. So they're trying to show this to people who maybe haven't seen Mean Girls before. And I guess showing it to people who don't know the original. But if I didn't know the original, I don't know if I would know. I mean, I'd know what was happening, but I don't think I would like have the understanding of like the depth of the characters and how well written those original characters really are. So obviously Renee Rapp is excellent. Like this is the Renee Rapp film. And to be honest, if she wasn't in it, I actually think I might have left. Her vocals are amazing. She's amazing. She's very good at playing scary. I would be terrified of meeting her, like genuinely fearful, in a good way. I do think the introduction of Regina and the plastics wasn't great. The introduction of her singing felt really out of place and clunky. I think cutting Where Do You Belong and the vast majority of Meet the Plastics, it just, I think you needed it. I, f I kind of feel like they wanted to remake the original Mean Girls, but they didn't really want to put songs in it, but they were like, oh, but Renee raps in it and like, she's a bloody good singer. We should have her singing songs. And they didn't understand how to blend that into the action. So they just did a bunch of the songs as dream sequences, I guess. That's the best way I can describe them. Like it felt like a cop out. I also felt like we didn't get a real introduction to Gretchen and Karen. It wasn't like these are the plastics and they're all kind of evil and Regina's just the most evil. It was like Regina is the plastics and these two girls hang around with her. I also felt like the portrayal of Regina in the script just wasn't as kind of as juicy as the original movie script for Regina. Like we didn't really see her being anything other than just mean and just rude, really. In the original, we get like, oh, your skirt's so nice. Like, where did you get it? Then as soon as the girl goes, she's like, that's the ugliest effing skirt. So in that way, we see her be nice to someone and then we see her cut them down behind their back. And we see why people around school admire her and why people want to be liked by her. In this movie, we just see her kind of be mean and rude. I don't think that is Renee's fault whatsoever. I think it's the script. I do think the casting of this movie was strange. Obviously, Renee, Jaquel Spivey, Aulili, great casting choices. Like, you can tell Renee and Jaquel are Broadway people. You can tell they're theatre people. I want Aulili to do Broadway so much. I think she would be so good in Hades Town. She needs to play Eurydice. But anyway, I think those three all look the right age. They sound right. They fit their characters really well. And for me, pretty much all of the other young cast felt incorrectly cast, in my opinion. BB, who played Gretchen, I actually think she had a really nice voice and I think that she had like the skittishness of Gretchen that worked really well. But I just felt she looked way too young. I thought she looked 14, 15, 16, not 17, 18. Like she looked kind of Disney Channel movie age. Does that make sense? And that's not her fault, obviously. And like next to Renee, she looked so much younger. I also thought Avantika looked really young until she did sexy. I think she probably looked about 14, 15, 16 as well. I can't lie as well. I wasn't a fan of her Karen. I thought she had a nice voice. And I thought sexy was, I thought she did a really good job of sexy, but acting wise, it felt like she was acting. She didn't feel like a real person. She didn't feel like a human even. Like Amanda Seyfried and Kate Rockwell, who have most famously played the role in the original movie and the musical respectively. Played Karen's dumb, but they played Karen as a real person. And like, listen, they're Karen's. She wasn't God's brightest bulb, but she was real. She was a real person. And I just felt like Avantika's Karen was so unreal. It felt like she didn't even understand how to interact with other humans. It felt like a really bad caricature, which is a shame because I think she did sexy really well, but I also didn't love, oh my God, this feels really bad. <laughs> 
I feel like I'm just complaining, but whatever. I wasn't a fan of Chris Brinney, is that how you say his name? Who played Aaron Samuels. I just felt like he was kind of barely there and he also looked about 40 to me. And I just didn't care about Aaron, the character. And I wasn't invested in Katie or Regina getting with him. So Chris said that he originally turned down the audition to play Aaron when he found out it was a musical. And then they were like, no, no, um, we've actually cut all of Aaron's songs. So you can audition. I think that basically explains the problem with Aaron though. Like a lot of his content was cut and it meant what was left was just kind of a bland boy. And they just cast someone who they thought will look good and young girls will find attractive. But they cut any like substance or intrigue away from him. Like what do we actually know about Aaron other than Katie fancies him and he used to go out with Regina? Like in the original, at least we got that he cares about his mom and his school and his friends. And in the musical, we see him and Katie bond in like doing math equations together and stuff. And then we get onto Katie. So played by Angowry Rice. I think she generally looked like a Katie. You know, she was like sweet and, but that was kind of it for her portrayal of the character of Katie for me. I have seen Angowry and other things and I have thought she was good, but in this, I'll be honest, it kind of felt like she'd had a lobotomy half the time. Part of it is due to the music and I will get to that, but I just, I just didn't really feel like she was giving much. I don't know if it was due to the script or that she wasn't comfortable with like being the lead in a musical. So the team clearly knew that Angari didn't have this super strong singing voice as most of her songs from the show were either cut, given to somebody else or transposed down about 500 octaves so it barely resembled singing. And I just don't understand like, like why cast someone who can't sing the score like at all and it's not as though she's like brimming with personality and charm and you're like oh she can't necessarily sing great but she she is Katie and therefore it doesn't matter that her vocals are 90% auto-tune and it kind of sounds like a robot singing I just didn't get it I don't think it was fair to the original source material I don't think it was fair to her so while we're here I guess we should talk about stupid with love arguably one of the most adorable songs in musical theatre and it being stripped of all feeling, excitement, energy, fun. And I don't think we can blame Angowry for this at all, really. The blame on this has to come to whoever did the arrangements for the movie musical. Because why would you take this cute, adorable song and turn it into a dull, dirgy, bland, pop song. I do think Angari could have given us more. Like, I do feel as though minimal acting through song was happening, but my God, the arrangement was tragic. I don't understand how Jeff Richmond and Nell Benjamin let that happen to the original score that they wrote. Like, was it their choice? Were they pushed by a musical supervisor? I don't know. I, I just don't know how you could have written those songs that way and then been like, yeah, let's strip them all back and turn them into this. Surely not. Surely not. Nell Benjamin of Legally Blonde. I can't. Honestly, also the direction for Stupid With Love was weird. <laughs> when they went outside and they started doing like TikTok dances, whew, I'm sorry, I literally had my hand, I was like this. They also had this bit with some like girls from the school being behind Katie and being I guess like her kind of Greek chorus I guess but they had no connection to her like like in Legally Blonde when they have people like telling Elle what to do or like supporting Elle or whatever just being her like backing singers in this dream sequence they're people that she knows and I think it would have been like it would have been great if they'd have had Gretchen and Karen and Janice being the background singers for it or something. But it just felt like, why are these random girls here? The general underscoring of the film as well, I personally felt like it was giving Disney Channel original movie. Like, where are the cute, like, African musical ch style changes that happen when Katie's looking at a picture and thinking of Africa or like, I just think the underscoring in the first one is so good. The Broadway score is so fun and bouncy and bright and engaging and I love it. And like pretty much every song was turned into a dirgy synth pop song that were just completely forgettable. Like the musical is Broadway and it's camp and it's still tongue in cheek and it's also modern. And the musical isn't the original movie and I like that. Like it's its own thing while paying homage to the old thing as well. Personally. I really didn't like Pretty Woman the musical because it felt like the movie on stage with songs. But Mean Girls is its own whole other thing while still having these great characters. And I think some of the songs, it was a good idea to be cut. Like they didn't need stop 
with a big tap number, but the songs that were kept were pulled back so much that they were almost unrecognisable. I think what's wrong with me was really nice vocally, and it sounded really similar to the original arrangement of the musical, which I liked. But then the direction for it was really awkward and weird, I felt like. We've got Gretchen in this closet singing to a music box with her thoughts towards Regina, while Katie's just awkwardly stood there behind her. Is she really singing? And is Katie listening? Is this a dream sequence? Like... What's happening? Something I am really glad about is so many people are showing the comparisons of the Broadway version to the movie version and so many people are starting to enjoy the Broadway version that maybe they haven't listened to before and I'm so happy about it because I love that score and I'm happy people like it. God, I literally have so much to say about this adaptation. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface so far. I liked the arrangement on Apex Predator. I do think it's a shame that we didn't see Katie sing it with Jack because I think it really explains Katie's change of mind towards Regina and her starting to understand like the dynamics of girlhood and stuff like that and it's a really good way to get the animal thing in without having it so obvious as it is in the show or the original movie but whatever I think Jaquel did a great job and I loved the vocals on it. I did think that Regina getting Gretchen to go back out with Jason by like snarling at a girl and spraying some perfume was just really cringe. <laughs> what? <laughs> I get it about the like pheromones of being an animal, but I just, oh, I didn't like it. <sighs> I just feel overall though, that the directors did not know how to do a movie musical. I feel like they didn't get it. Like musicals are weird and yes, people burst out into song, but if you create a world where singing and dancing is normal and expected and it makes sense and it isn't weird, it won't feel weird. Whereas every time a song started in the this movie, I was like, oh, that's awkward. I'm a musical person. What about the people who are seeing this movie and they're like, I didn't know this was a musical and it's not even terribly well done. I just hated how like a scene would be going and it'd be, you know, you're moving along and then suddenly it stops and everyone freezes and a song starts. <laughs> But then sometimes there wasn't a dream sequence. So like, is this singing in this world that we've created? Is this song in a world where Janice and Damien see people singing, but they're not really? I feel like they were kind of going for the latter. It just wasn't clear enough. And I think if I hadn't read that article, I wouldn't have really got that at all. God, there were just so many freezes and so many TikToks. Like that was the longest TikTok I've ever watched. I read one of the directors saying that they wanted to use the camera in the same way that somebody would use an iPhone or something, but it just didn't quite read. Like it wasn't done enough. Like if you're gonna do it that way, then fine, do it that way, but like do it with conviction. Like you're all gonna know what I'm talking about. The bit with Katie in Revenge Party, it's like this zoom in and they did her so dirty with the camera angle, my God, where she's going, I'll get our party now. My oh, candy cane, please. <laughs> it's like really low. They have this weird camera angle of her. I mean, for me, it really reminded me of that gif, that Muppet. Like was that supposed to be her filming herself on an iPhone? Is that what the angle was? And like, if that's the case, who was that video for? Where was it gonna go? Was it gonna go in Janice and Dave? Damien's film. The shots were so weird. Like sometimes it did feel like you were watching a normal big budget movie and then sometimes it felt like you were watching a TikTok that a 14 year old filmed. I like using mixed media and I think if done right it can work really well but I think the difference needed to be established more clearly. I do think we can all agree that it was a good call to cut whose house is it though. Something I did like was when Katie walked into Janice and Damien's on Halloween Janice and Damien were watching the same movie that Janice and Damien were watching in the original film and I thought that was a really nice touch. I also loved the way that Janice and Damien told the story of what happened between Regina and Janice when they were kids, like with the dolls and stuff. I thought that was really funny and it was a bit different and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I do feel like there was a lack of 
tension in the movie. I didn't feel tension between Aaron and Katie. Like when she said, your hair looks sexy, push back. And in the original movie, the way that Katie says, your hair looks sexy, push back is like, it takes Aaron back and he's like, oh, that's awkward. She's, she's talking to me differently. And there's like subtext to the action and it's more interesting. And in this, she was like, your hair looks sexy, push back. And he's like, okay, thanks. I didn't feel there was enough tension between the girls either. Like, they might have been given it in the scenes, but an audience somewhat does need to be brought into that more clearly. You need to have those shots of the tension. The director needs to build the tension along with the actors. They need to let us into it. Oh my God. Nothing made me more angry in this film than when they're doing the candy cane handing out. And he goes, and none for Gretchen Wieners, bye. And she goes, who's that from? Oh, it's from Regina, Regina, Regina. And it's on beat, right? So it's going, and none for Gretchen Wieners, bye. That what it needs to it needs to be on the beat. If you've got the beat going, it needs to go with it. And then the who's that from? Oh, it's from Regina, Regina, Regina. You. It actually really bothered me that it wasn't on the beat. Why? Why when a song is so good and it's so easy to get the beat to make it snappy? Cut the cameras. So when talking about the costuming of the movie, I felt like it was a real miss. In the original movie, you see the girls and you understand why they are revered by everyone in the school. In this movie, the, plas the plastics look like they were wearing last year's Sheen discards. Regina George is from money. You're telling me she would be wearing an ill-fitting corset top on Wednesday of all days? The clothes didn't look expensive or aspirational, fashion forward in any way. And I'm not saying I am, but I can tell the difference. I also felt like you didn't see the progression of Katie's clothing enough and her being taken over by the plastics. Like even a few weeks in, she's still wearing her jeans and her hoodies. In the show, maybe she wasn't full plastic straight away. Like she was changing into plastic silhouette. She was wearing a mini skirt and a vest top, but it's still in her like Africa colors. She's not full plastic, but she's doing a hint of it. And you see the same with Lindsay Lohan in the original. It was more gradual. Like, I just don't think Regina would have this girl around if she didn't like get with how we're looking, you know? I loved Busy Phillips as Regina's mom. I think she looked perfect as Renee's mom. But again, I'm like, so Amy Poehler in the original movie, she's wearing a juicy tracksuit and it's perfect, it's of the time, it's great. This mom, Busy Phillips as this mom, is wearing like an oversized pink tracksuit that looks like it was from Primark or something. This mom, she's on TikTok and she's like trying to be young or whatever. Pop her in some skims, put her in a Lululemon pink outfit with a bloody Stanley cup in her hand and like make her be that aspirational mom TikToker that the character is. I do think the massive amount of TikTok in this movie was just so on the nose of 2024 aesthetics and I do think the styling and everything, I do think it will make this movie age so much faster than the original movie or the show. And I feel like even in a year or so, this stuff is gonna feel really dated. Like TikTok trends and fashion trends are moving so much faster than they ever have. And it's just gonna become stale really soon, I think. Like for sure, technology should have been included, absolutely. It's as though somebody said, okay, we're doing Mean Girls for Gen Z. What did Gen Z like? TikTok. Okay, what else? TikTok. Anything else? No, just TikTok. Even having the burn book, there was a line like, remember we made this the day that our phones were all taken off us. Like, yes, Gen Z loves a TikTok, but they still do activities that aren't on their phones. Gen Z still use books, you know? They still write things. <laughs> I think Regina like spreading the burn book by her putting the book in the corridor and then one person picking it up and taking pictures and it going out on social media. Like, I understand the reason it was done that way, but I, I really missed the imagery of like in the show, you see Regina like over the photocopy, like scanning the pages. And then in the movie, you see her with the papers throwing them around and like, it's such a strong image. And this Regina put the book on the floor and walked away. 
Oh, quickly on the TikTok stuff as well. Chris Olsen and Megan Thee Stallion, them doing TikToks about this supposedly random school, this random girl, is that supposed to be that like they go to the school or is it that the videos of Regina went so viral on TikTok that you've got famous people seeing it? If that's the case, you would expect the videos from the people in the school who were like, oh my God, I just saw this happen about this girl in my school to like be doing numbers. But the videos had like 400 and 500 likes. Like those numbers aren't getting your high school popular girl on Megan Thee Stallion's TikTok for you page. I just feel like they kind of fumbled that bit with the views and why these famous people would be talking about it. Megan Thee Stallion even said like, get this off my algorithm. I also think so much of the story happening through a TikTok lens kind of made you miss what was happening a bit. The ceremony where Regina got all wet, like why did we see no lead up to that in any way? And then the timelines of things within the TikToks, like Regina got hit by the bus, you see a TikTok of a girl saying like, at school yesterday I saw this happen, and then the next scene is later on that evening, but we've just seen a TikTok from the next day. It just kind of seemed messy. Maybe I'm looking into a bit more but like I think that stuff matters if you're going to do something do it right like they're little wins that you can get something I did think was really funny was Damien doing the reciting of the iCarly theme tune in French like it was fun and weird and camp and I loved it I also saw in this article I read about the directors say them saying like oh you know there's a there's a type of comedy that flew and was funny 20 years ago that just doesn't fly now and I do agree to some extent like we didn't need the n-word, we didn't need the r-word, but I did feel like the comedy was lacking in this film. I don't know if it was too much trying to be safe or whatever, but I was honestly shocked that Tina Fey was the screenwriter. I also think like, okay, so we're not doing a lot of the kind of comedy style that we did in the noughties and a lot of stuff from the original film that we would consider offensive today, but to include Fire Crotch Y2K is back, felt cruel. It's widely known to be a misogynistic and offensive name that was used towards Lindsay Lohan herself back in the day and to include that and then have her be in the film as well and not pre-warn her feels so bad. And I'm like you're doing this whole thing like yeah we can do Mean Girls but we're doing it the nice way and to include Firecrotch it felt unnecessary and I thought we weren't doing that humour anymore. I do think it's a shame how many classic lines from the movie were kind of missing. Like, boo you whore, who else was personally victimised by Regina George, and the teachers all put their hands up. The original Mean Girls is so quotable. And I do also quote from the musical as well quite often, but I didn't honestly feel like we got any real lines from this movie that we're gonna quote again for years to come. And I will admit, in the screening that I went to, the bits that people were laughing at the most were the bits from the original movie or things that hinted at the original movie. Oh, I did think it was funny. Regina was like, what is fetch? And Gretchen said, oh, it's from an old movie. I thought that was funny. I think maybe they didn't get the bits that people love so much. And then I feel like they overplayed bits that other people, yes, they like, but it's maybe not like as big as they think it is. Like like the Glen Coco thing, for example. Like, yes, people love it in the movie and people like it in the show. And it is a thing in the show because it's a thing in the movie. But the directors were like, oh, we wanted Harry Styles to play Glen Coco. Why? And then they're like, actually no, we won't have Harry Styles because actually we are all Glen Coco. So in this movie, everyone looks at the camera and says to the audience, Glen Coco, Glen Coco, Glen Coco. Like it just feel, it felt a bit try hard. And for a film that is so, we're not your mums, like we're new and we're fun and we're cool. It felt cringe. I also feel bad for saying it because like, I really love a lot of Tina Fey's work and she's been very kind to me personally. I feel bad saying all this. I know she said like, you know, I know a lot of millennials feel ownership over the original movie and I'm trying really hard to be like, don't tar the name of Mean Girls and don't change anything from a classic movie from back in my day. Because I would have been so down for a really good remake. I really would have loved it. I would have eaten it up like a whole box of Calteen bars. But this one just didn't hit the mark for me. I think there was too many faults with it as a movie, regardless of anything else, for me to not enjoy it. But anyway, back to the rest of the movie. I think Aulili did a great job playing Janice. I really loved her version of Someone Gets Hurt Reprise. 
and I loved the bit with Janice and Damien on the jazzy. Excellent. I really loved her vocals on I'd Rather Be Me. So the directors were like, oh, I'd Rather Be Me is Janice's moment to be like, I'm gonna take the camera and everyone's gonna follow me. As we previously mentioned, I think the movie is as though it was filmed by Janice and Damien. So this was her moment of being like, keep the camera on me, look at me, sing into the audience but I didn't really feel like it made sense in the movie. Like, I kind of felt like, are the people around her on her side or not? Because it was so chaotic. There was so much running around. I was like, I can't really get the vibe. Like, she went into the gym, the bunch of lads, and then she was with the music club, and I don't know, I just didn't quite get it. I do think, in a way, I just don't kind of understand remakes. Like, why remake something? I understand turning it into a musical and then remaking it, but it's like they didn't want to make it a musical, so why did they do it? And I know they said like, oh, we're updating it for a younger audience. I pers I do think the original stands the test of time. Like, and although it was quite 2004, it also holds up in 2024 still. And I kind of feel like it's underestimating young people to be like, oh, well, young people won't enjoy the original Mean Girls movie because they're not all on TikTok and it's not relatable enough to their life. And I'm like, I think it is. I thought the pacing of the movie was a little bit odd as well. The moving around of songs into weird places, like Stupid With Love being at the Spring Fling slash Mathlete competition thing. It didn't feel like it made sense into the storyline. Also, I have to know, was Elf a sponsor of this film? Maybe I can get with KD saying the brand name of a product, because she doesn't... I don't know. But when it's like Regina drops her makeup and there's just like a solid clip just of Elf. Oh, I hate a product placement that doesn't feel natural. It just felt clunky. So the directors also said that they wanted to make the movie pay attention to like the big emotions that you feel when you're a teenager and the stuff that maybe we as adults would find trivial is a huge thing to a teenager. I think they did quite a good job of that with Regina. After everyone took pictures of her when she fell over and stuff, I genuinely felt sorry for her. I don't know if that's just because Renee is a great actor, because honestly, I didn't really feel like that with anybody else. Maybe a little bit with Janice. I also think Renee was so good in the spring fling scenes where she's like high on her pain meds. Where she's like, it's not your fault. A, bu a bus pushed me. I can't say a bus pushed me. It's hard to say. I think something we also missed in this film that is so good in the original movie and the show is like the creation of the world of North Shore High and all the other students that are in it. Like, I don't feel like we saw enough of the other characters in the school and I don't think we saw why people wanted to be Regina and why they admired her and stuff. Yeah, in a lot of teen movies, everyone kind of actually hates the popular girl, but they also admire her and they want to be her and it's not just she's popular because everyone's scared of her. There's layers, you know? I think I would have liked a bit more of a rounder ending as well. I know that's not in the stage show usually, but I think the original movie and other movies that do a wrap up, it works really well. I think it's nice to see how a movie like this has changed the characters. In the 2004 movie, we see how the story has changed them and their new groups or whatever. And then at the end, you see the next wave of plastics come along and it's like, oh, even though all this happened, it's just like a factory though. You're just gonna get the new Mean Girls next time. And this movie in the stage show just ends at prom. It's like, oh. Okay, I just think, I think it would have been good. Okay, so I know this has been a pretty long and in-depth video and if you're still here, like, whew, salute to you. You're a real one. I hope this didn't come across as some old millennial lady, like, complaining about, like, ruining a classic from back in my day, but more just discussing my opinions as a musical theatre fan who saw the show a few times and loves the score and loves the writing team and let me know what you thought, you know, unless you disagree with me and then in that case, shut up. I'm joking. Um, JK, JK, as one of the characters in Mean Girls the movie musical would say, Thank you so much for watching, thank you for sticking around, and I will try to be back soon. I actually have a lot of ideas for videos, so hopefully. And as I say, I'm going to New York in March. Let me know what I should see. I'm already going to see Little Shop of Horrors and The Great Gatsby, but what else should I see? I love you lots, I will see you soon, bye. Ooh. I've literally forgotten how to do this. <laughs>